What's up guys, welcome back. So today we're gonna be looking at stationary points. Uh, we're gonna be looking at how to find whether they're a minimum or a maximum. And we're also gonna be sketching. So let's get into it. All right, the first one says find the stationary points and determine the nature of this function here. Now, for any stationary point, we're really thinking about when is the gradient flat, okay? So when is the gradient equal to zero? And we're gonna find that out by saying f dash x equals zero. So we're trying to solve for when the gradient is zero. So f dash x here, it will be three x squared minus two x minus five. And I'm gonna solve that equals zero. So three x squared minus two x minus five equals zero. Because that's gonna tell me where on the curve the gradient is zero. So here I can see it's probably quadratic. So let's just quickly PSF it here. So my product is three times minus five is minus 15, sums minus two. So my factors I think will be minus five and three. So three X squared minus five X plus three X minus five is equal to zero. Factorize in pairs. So you've got X outside of three X minus five plus one outside of three X minus five equals zero. So X plus one 3x minus 5 equals 0. So x is equal to minus 1 or 5 on 3. All right. So, so far I found two possible points that can be stationary points. So what I'm going to do just quickly is I'm going to find what the corresponding y coordinate is. And I do that by substituting each one of these numbers back into the original equation. Okay. So f of minus 1, well, what's that going to be? Let's put it in the calculator. So minus 1 cubed minus minus one squared minus five of minus one minus three so it looks like it's zero so f of minus one equals zero and then what's f of five one three so i'm just putting this as division instead of a fraction just is a bit easier and it looks like f of five on three is this ugly number, which is minus two, five, six on 27. Okay. All right, so I've got my two possible stationary points, but I need to, what we call determine their nature. And I basically want to know, is it going to be a max or is it going to be a minimum stationary point? And I do that by drawing this table and I put x at the top and f dash x at the bottom. And my goal of this is just to see whether or not on either side of these points, the gradient is positive or negative. So I'm going to put them all into one table. I'm going to put the smallest one first, one from the right. So that's minus one. And I'll put five, one, three here. And all I need to do, right, is just fill in numbers on either side. So a number smaller than minus one is minus two. Um, bigger than minus one, but less than five, one, three is zero. You can choose anything here as long as it's within the range. 513 is just like under two, so let's just choose two here, and then we're done. So I know that the gradient at minus one and 513 is zero, so I just put a zero here. Now what's the gradient when x is equal to minus two? So what I do is I find what is f dash x of minus two. So I'm just gonna put it into this formula here. I'm gonna put minus two into this formula here. So f of minus two, What's that equal to? Sorry, f dash of minus two. So that's gonna be three outside of minus two squared minus two of minus two minus five. That is 11. So I put 11 there. Okay, now what's the gradient f dash of zero? So just by looking at it, it's gonna be three times zero, which is zero, minus two times zero, which is zero, minus five, so that's minus five. there and what about two so three of two squared minus two times two minus five the answer here is two okay so what i want to do below this is i just want to draw a quick kind of dash whether it's positive the gradient or is the gradient negative so 11 is a positive gradient so i've got a line like that zero is obviously flat negative goes down like this zero is flat like that and two is positive so what that tells me is that 
there, because it goes from positive flat to negative, that has to be, this point has to be a max. So this point here has to be a max. And then likewise here, but in the opposite, it goes negative, flat, positive. So this point has to be a minimum. So this point has to be a minimum. Okay, so therefore I can say that minus one zero is a max and five one three minus two five six on twenty seven is a min. Done. Okay, let's have a look at this question here. Pretty similar. It says find the stationary points and determine their nature and we're gonna sketch the curve this time. Alright, so we're gonna bring it all together. We're gonna to find the stationary points, we're gonna determine their nature, and we're gonna sketch what we think it looks like. So once again, to find stationary points, we need to find f dash x equal to zero. So f dash x is three x squared minus 12 x plus nine. I solve this equals zero, so zero is equal to three x squared minus 12 x plus nine. I factor the three out, so that's x squared minus four x plus three. And now I can do the quadratic, which will be three, uh, I think x minus three, x minus one. So my stationary points will be x is equal to three or one. Okay, now quickly let's find what f of three equals to, just so I have the coordinate. And also what's f of one equal to? Okay, so f of three will be three cubed minus six, oh, three cubed minus six times three squared plus nine times three minus four. So f of three is four, minus four. What's f of one? So we're gonna have one cubed minus six times one squared plus nine times one minus four, and that's zero. Okay, so my coordinates will be three minus four and one the zero. Okay, now let's determine their nature. Okay, so remember to determine their nature, we need to draw this table. So my smallest point here is one, so I'll put that first. And then my next point is three. So a number smaller than one is zero, in between one and three is two, and then in between three is, uh, sorry, bigger than three is four. Put in my gradients for one and three. And now let's just test f dash x of zero into this equation here. And I can quickly see that that's gonna be just nine, right? So nine here. So f dash of zero is nine. What's f dash of one? Well, let's put it in the calculator. Three bracket, one squared minus 12 times one plus nine. So that's equal to zero. Oh. Okay, now let's test f of f dash of two. So three bracket two squared minus 12 of two plus nine, that's minus three. And then lastly, let's test f of f dash of four. So three bracket four squared minus 12 of four plus nine, and that's nine. Okay, so now we've done this, let's draw the gradient below. Nine is positive, zero is flat, minus three is negative, zero is flat, and nine is positive. So straight away, I can tell that this will be a max and this will be a min. So this is a max and this is a min. Okay, let's sketch it. Okay, so straight away, I just wanna put in my y intercept. So y intercepts here is easy because y intercept is when x equals zero. So my point will be at negative four. So I'm just adding some detail here. Okay, I've got a minimum, oh, sorry, a maximum turning point at one zero. So let's call this one. Oh, sorry, that's not one zero. I've got a maximum turning point at one zero. So let's put that here, one zero. And I'm gonna do a little upside down U to show that it's a max, just to give me some guidance. And I've got a minimum at three, four. So three comma negative four. So also on the same kind of uh, level as the y intercept. And I know this is a max, so, oh sorry, a min, so I would do a little up U, okay? Now for the sake of this, we're not gonna find the x-intercepts, we're just doing a sketch to see what it looks like. 
and we're also not going to do any inflection points. That'll be in a following video. Okay, so let's just think about what the graph looks like. It has to pass through here. It has to go up to here and come back down. It has to hit this minimum and go back up. So it's going to look something like that. Like this. Oh, it. Okay, so that would be the basic shape of our function. Let's look at this example here. So find the stationary points, determine the nature and sketch the curve. So we should be pretty familiar what to do now. So f dash x is equal to 15 x to the 4 minus 60 x squared. And we want to solve that equals 0. This will help us find the stationary points. So 15 x squared, factorizing that out, will be, I think, x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. So 15 x squared x plus 2, x minus 2 equals 0. So my stationary points will actually be three terms, 0, minus 2, and 2. Okay, now let's quickly find the coordinates. So f of 0 here is just going to be 0. I can tell that straight away. f of minus 2, let's put it in the calculator. So I've got 3 bracket minus 2 to the power of 5 minus 20, oh, minus 20 bracket minus 2 to the power of 3, and that's 64. And f of 2, what's that going to be? So f of 2 is going to be minus 64. Okay, so they're my three coordinates. Cool, so I've got my coordinates, and now I just need to determine the nature. So whip up the table. So I've got 0, or sorry, I should put minus 2 first, and then 0, and then 2. So what's a number smaller than minus 2? That's minus 3. In between minus 2 and, minus, and 0 is minus 1, 1, and 3. Quickly put the zeros in. That's the 0 gradient. And now I just got to put in what the uh, gradient at these points is. Okay, so putting in the first derivative. The first one will have minus 3, so we'll have 15, bracket, negative 3, to the power of 4, minus 60, bracket, negative 3, squared. So that's 6, 7, 5. What about minus 1? So minus 1 is minus 45. What about 1? That's minus 45. What about 3? That's 6, 7, 5. Okay, so now I'll put my gradient underneath. So positive, flat, negative. Flat, positive. Oh, sorry, flat, negative. Flat, positive. Okay, so this point here, because it goes up, down, Sorry, up, flat, down. It's going to be a max. This point here is interesting, right? Because it goes down, flat, and then down again. And this is what we call an inflection point. So a point of inflection right here. I'll talk about that in a second. And then lastly, 2, 0. Well, that's just, you're going to be your minimum. All right. And now let's sketch it. So just roughly putting these points in, I know from the original equation, my y-intercept will be zero because that's when x equals zero. I've got a max at minus two, 64. I've got a point of inflection at zero, zero, and I've got a minimum at two minus 64. So quickly just putting those points in, what do I have? I have minus two, and we'll call this 64 here. That is a max up here. I'll come back to this zero point in a second where our point of inflection is. And then we've got 2 minus 64, which is a minimum like this. So what's happening is in this inflection point, the point of inflection is basically when we say the concavity changes. So hopefully 
you can kind of see, and I've exaggerated a bit here, this is concave up, okay? This bit is concave up because it's like forms a U like this. Whereas this bit over here, this bit's actually concave down, so it changes in concavity. If you're not sure about this, watch my following video, which will be on inflection points, and we can go into more detail about what they are and how to interpret them. But for the rest of this graph, it's the same. So I know that that's a max, so it comes down like this. I know that it's a min, so it goes up like this. And this is gonna come down, and it's gonna change concavity, so it's gonna go flat for a bit, and then it's gonna come back down here, connect up to my graph, and you have your sketch like so. All right, so that's it for today. We covered a lot. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And if there's any other videos you wanna see, let me know. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.